video number two. So I covered everything on the outside except for the awnings, um, a few other little switches that we have here. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna go through these. Uh, it is next day, I'm outside now. It's a little chilly, so a little runny nose. Let's start here, main power, turn it off. Uh, big thing with that, this is just a battery disconnect. What you don't want to do is turn that off when you're basically camping. Uh, the only time you're going to use this is uh, during short-term storage or long-term storage. Turn it back on, you'll have power through the whole coach. Again, the only time you're really going to use this one is during storage on anything. We have a step light here, step power, step light, it's going to be right there. And the step power is actually to make it so the step stays out when it's in down position. So, you know, you had a little too much to, uh, uh, <laughs> you haven't had your coffee in the morning yet. So, you come out, you step down the stairs, the steps are out already. You don't have to worry about them uh, having to come out and forgetting that they're coming out. That's a big thing. So, it is nice to have the steps stay out all the time. You don't have to worry about it going in and out all the time. Switch is right above that. You have light master on, light master off. Light master on is going to turn everything on. Light master off will turn everything off. You have extend and retract. This is for your awning. You have to hold the switch. that'll go out all the way all right so right above that you have awning light which is going to be on the tube and then you have cargo lights will turn off all the lights underneath and you can see the green light there anytime it flashes it's on or off let me keep retracting this you have your porch light here which is going to be that light there then your main ceiling light so basically entry light anything with up and down arrow on it is going to be something you can push and hold and it's going to dim or brighten the lights as you want pretty simple stuff there we'll move up here close the door like I said it's a little chilly I think it's 45 degrees today Right here on the passenger seat, we have day passenger and night passenger. What these are going to allow is for your front shades. Day passenger. And night passenger. We'll let that one go down all the way. You will have to adjust the uh, curtain just a little bit when you uh, get it down to where you want it. Just kind of flip it forward. This is going to be the same with the driver's side when you get that down. All right. You also have a button here that says step, slide, extend, and retract. That's going to be so you can sit in the passenger seat and not have to worry about it. You can step down, you won't fall down the stairs. It does lift. And I'm a 300 pound man and I can still put my weight on that. I do like that you get a 110 plug here. Uh, so when your inverter's on, you'll be able to use that. We're going to go around to showing you inside a little bit. This is with everything closed. It's a little tight quarters back to the panels, but it is doable. Same with the rear bathroom. A little bit of storage, as well as an antenna booster here. The antenna booster is going to allow you to watch over the air antenna. It's 
just making sure I'm not missing anything because sometimes I like to hide everything up front. All right, let's fight back a little bit. Like I said, it's a little narrow. Nice space though. Ooh. All right, seems I'm on a little on level ground today. I'm gonna go back. I know it seems like I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm not so much. So what I really wanna cover is the leveling jacks before I get into the slide outs. Reason being is we wanna run the leveling jacks before. Ooh, air horn. That made me jump. <laughs> that scared me a little bit. All right, so leveling jacks, we wanna run them down before we run out the slide outs. So turn this power on, let it go through its cycle, and as soon as you can, hit auto level. This takes about two to three minutes depending on uh, your levelness already. What you'll hear is the air release, and if you look outside you can see we're dropping a little bit. So that's gonna release air. You'll always hear that when you hit auto level. Jacks will go down and then it'll start to level from there. Uh, when it is done, it'll actually just stop beeping. You can either feel free to push the power button, turn it off, or you can let it turn it off itself in about, uh, I think it's a five minute interval there. But that gives you that idea. Air horn is just by this. That's why I pushed it when I was trying. I'll go through that again later, and I'll go through everything else up front, uh, either in a third video, and depending on how much time I have in the number, uh, second video. Alright, now let's get back here and show you some little features before it even gets level so I can be right there and save a little bit of time on my video. It is a tight fit back here, but you can see all this screen on your phone. You can see right now we have propane, levels full, black tanks empty, gray tanks empty, freshwater tanks empty. It is also winterized. We're also going to see uh, satellite dome, so that you can turn on satellite receiver if you decide to get a receiver for it. The entry door you can also lock from here. Lock and unlock. Leveling jacks are done. So I'm gonna go through a couple of these things real quick and then go into levelers. Uh, you can see it's uh, 47 in the rear front, or 48 in the front. That is Fahrenheit, that is temperature of the coach right now. Like I said, nose is a little runny at the moment. You also have water pump, water heater gas, water heater electric. I know I said I'd say tell you about that uh, in this video from the first video. So what I usually tell people, it is not full right now, so I'm not gonna actually push the buttons, but the water heater electric, turn that on. If you're just using, uh, if you're plugged in, you're uh, just camping, you're doing some dishes, you're washing your hands, stuff like that, that is a perfect thing to use for that situation. But as soon as you're ready to take a shower, leave that on, turn on the water heater gas. It's gonna give you a little longer shower time, um, and allow you to at least, you know, get five, ten minutes out of it instead of, you know, three to five. Um, it does help. Right below that, we have your house batteries are 12.6 and your chassis batteries are 12.9. The running generator is running right now with 0 0.9 hours on it. By the time I'm done, we'll have just a little over an hour um, because I'm not plugged in right now and I just would like to have uh, power. So you can start and stop it here. You can also start and stop it from your phone. There's also a switch on the dashboard. I will show you how that one goes as well. AGS right now is disabled. You can enable AGS, which is automatic generator start. Um, try. I only got to hold it for three seconds. AGS is going to bring you into this uh, set up here It's going to tell you where we're at for voltage how many amps uh, out volts Basically everything you might possibly need to know on 
what you're running for battery. Uh, low battery cutout. I like it to be around 11.6, 11.7 is perfect. Um, VAC, we're not going to worry about that one too much. Um, that one, it's going to, it's not something you're going to be using a whole lot. It's not something that you're um, going to really need. It's just there. I like to set it to a certain point and let it sit. Uh, search watts. Again, another one of those ones you won't use a whole lot. And actually probably never. It's going to be more for like a lot of dry camping. Um, if you're extended batteries, stuff like that, it's what you're going to be doing there. I'm not worried about that one so much. Um, when you do decide you want to start dry camping stuff like that look in your manual it will explain that a little better um charge rate 100 percent so it charges batteries to 100 percent absorb hours why this is so low i don't know so it is going to absorb charge your batteries for four hours on absorb rate so it's going to keep charging your battery as long as the generator is on Oh, a little bit going on there, huh? Low battery cutout, max charge rate, 100%, and then the battery type right now, those are AGMs. Let's go over here. We'll go to the slide out so I have a little bit more space. i going to give you a little warning, make sure everything's clear around you. And that screen looks a little complicated. It's really not. My brain likes to overcomplicate things for some reason. But right now, I am going to do the slide out, passenger slide, slide out, do extend just because I am really pushed up against this. You will also be able to do this from your phone as well. And just that one alone. Just that one alone gives you a ton of space. You know, it's actually livable at this point. Until you try to get in the bed. Then it's a little more complicated. All right. Try not to move too fast because I know the blurriness gets to people's heads. All right, we'll do the driver's side. You're going to hear the slide seals rubbing against it. So that's, that's a normal sound. done we'll go to uh, bed slide what you'll notice here is the belt before I do the bed slide you notice the bed tilt has a lock on it so I cannot run it down it is up on an angle now so just keep that in mind we'll do that one we'll do bed slide extend that is a Schwinn tech uh, slide out so that one you either want to let it go all the way out or all the way in don't like to let it stop in between um, they like to jam up if you do, so just hold it and make sure it goes all the way out or come all the way in. And now you'll see that the bed has the down portion. That one takes a little longer. Just on this alone, I'm going to... Yeah, there will be a third video. Beds all the way down now. Make sure you run the blind shades up because you can see that one got a little um, creased a little bit. It won't matter. I will run it up and let it sit over uh, a little bit of time. Then it will just straighten back out. But the bed's a nice size bed, queen size bed. Almost a king, not quite. And we'll do your vanity as well. Again, Schwinn Tech, all the way out or all the way in, never in between. Just let that one run. Uh, 
and you can sit here and hold it after it stops because it's going to stop and it's going to it's not going to allow it to give it any more power we can also do the patio awning here as well as where is this one entry awning is here so there is an awning right above the door that you can control from your app or from this point Again, because it's a little chilly in here, I'm going to jump straight into, let's go, this is what you'll always see when you first open it up, a little temperature gauge there, it says rear and front, let's turn on the rear, nope, let's turn on the front, because that one's going to have the furnace. Why that turned on the AC, because I don't want cool furnace. There we go, because it was the heat pump that was running. We said when we were up, when I was outside that the I turned on the propane tank, so that's why I did this so we could run a little heat. You can also run the heat pump at the same time. Big thing about a heat pump is it does not like to work below 55 degrees or 50 degrees, uh, depending on the day. Uh, it's mostly meant to get the chill out of the air and not actually uh, heat up the whole unit so much. You can run furnace in the front and then heat pump in the back if you want. Push the heat pump, which is gonna run from your air conditioner, not from your furnace. That's gonna be a 110 power. So you need to be plugged in or generator running for it. Uh, let's go 72 on both. Also, how you turn on your ACs is just tap the AC, auto fans. This one's pretty fun. I always like to leave things on auto. I think you can see that it's on auto, but they're both on auto right now. So that covers the HVAC uh, fans on this one. It does have kitchen exhaust fan and bed bathroom exhaust fan. So the exhaust fans above my head here, you would have to crank it up first. And this is a manual vent. Crank it up first and then you'll be able to do the exhaust fan on that. Just tap it once, it turns it on, tap it a second time, turns it off, or you can go from intake to exhaust, either way. <clears throat> bathroom's kind of fun because you can control it out here, so, you know, someone's in the bathroom stinking it up, you can be like, haha, I got you. Alright, so that's the fans. Uh, we'll go to lighting here lighting here you have a little bit more control over everything where everything is um, again arrow up and down means you can adjust brightness bath bed ceiling bed overhead so on and so forth uh, awning and porch and cargo lights we're not going to go on the cargo we turn that off now I'm going to use everything else now so I'm not worried about that one so that's lighting and then generator this one's gonna get a little more into things. Uh, right now we're absorbing for the inverter. So the inverter is absorbed charging your batteries and the inverter is a pass through right now because it is using the generator to run uh, the coach instead of the inverter. And the inverter on this one's gonna do most of your outlets. It's gonna do your fridge, your microwave, um, all your TVs, pretty fun stuff. Uh, I will show you how to turn that on. Once you turn off the generator, you will be able to go back to this. So inverter charger, more, more settings, which is the one we've already done. Go back, generator, we'll do AGS on this one. This one is, this one's a little more in depth. Generator on this one, a lot of places have quiet times. Uh, you're at a campground, uh, generator they offer quiet times they they require quiet times so 10 45 a.m. is when they start and 11 a.m. is when they stop that's probably not a good thing we'll go to I must have it on Let's turn off quiet time Uh, a lot of campgrounds are going to be between 8 and 9. Start quiet time at 9 p.m. And they usually let you turn your generator back on about 7. 
I just turned it off though. So, all right, uh, starting voltage is that going to be at 11.5 volts. Uh, that is very typical. 11.5 um, volts is, uh, I don't like to see it anywhere below 11.5. I like to go to 11.6. Uh, anything less than that, you might struggle starting your generator. Um, time at start volts, 60 seconds. So once it hits 11.6 volts, it's going to wait 60 seconds to try to start it. And it stops at 13.5 volts, so once it hits 13.5 volts, it will turn off the generator. That way you have a full battery. Time at start volts, once it hits 120 minutes, um, and it hits that, it will actually stop. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> I just backed myself up there. So once it hits 120 minutes, even if it's not at 13.5 volts, it will shut off still. Oh, I didn't mean to shake that while I was doing that. Minimum generator runtime, so 15 minutes. Uh, that's typical. So if you have, it just decides you want to be at 15 minutes. You only went down a few uh, a few volts. That's that's going to be 15 minutes as minimum. It's going to take longer than that to charge up to 13.5 from 11.6, but it is there. Max run time is 720 minutes. Man, if it takes 720 minutes to start or to charge your battery, that's a problem. You're probably using a lot and you're not being uh, mindful that you are running off generator. About 400 minutes, I would say, is going to be about the most I like to set them about three, three hundred, and then start gen start retries. Uh, that's a big one. Mostly I like to set that to about three, just because uh, if you ever run your diesel low and it and it has a little bit of air in the lines, uh, it does happen. If you drop the diesel below a quarter tank, you can get a little air in your generator lines. So three starts is usually pretty accurate. It usually works really well that way because um, it may not start the first or second time, but 90 times, uh, nine out of 10 times, it will start on the third try. Uh, between retries, 60 seconds. Uh, we'll go, oh, actually 60 seconds is the max. I'd prefer two minutes, but cool. There's a lot to learn here. I am sorry. I'm glad it's a video and you can um, go back and check on this low voltage so that's going to be a trigger HVAC is going to be a trigger as well so HVAC if you if your thermostat says it's at 72 degrees and it jumps to you know 73 74 what will happen is it and you want the air conditioner to turn on the air conditioner or the generator will start and then your AC will turn on bring it to 72 degrees AC will turn off and generator will turn off as well so if you have a dog inside the coach um, that's a big thing to have a lot of owners have dogs you know you don't want to go into uh, IHOP and decide oh we're gonna spend an hour in here and it gets hot in there yeah it's not a good thing so that will allow that to run off that that would be your HVAC load low voltage HVAC load um, right now the AGS isn't disabled so I'm gonna go back to generator it did stop on me I am gonna restart it it didn't take long that time it is running now it takes about 30 seconds to a minute for it to actually produce power into the coach so always be mindful of that as well a lot going on here all right we did home we did generator we did lights we did that we did fans we did slide outs now we'll do the gear at the bottom right now it is actually 9:23 a.m uh, cleaning mode it's just so you can touch the screen and you don't have to worry about anything there 15 seconds oh just turn the everything turn back on so you can clean the screen and 15 seconds there it is okay so that allows you to clean the screen without having to push any buttons you can set your time here as well. It tells me what the floor plan is, entry switch, battery, uh, network diagnostics. 
not something I'm gonna suggest you get into too much unless you uh, you're on the phone with one of us back into this mobile app uh, I highly suggest you download Vega touch Mira this is the screen it's gonna look like Vega touch Mira this is gonna allow you to use this uh, basically everything in here on your phone and that will be your ID you'll see it when you open it up and you're inside the coach and the pin number is one two three four five six and I always suggest restart pin um, especially after this because a lot of people use one two three four five six and your app could actually try to connect into other people's coaches which could be kind of fun and funny but not very kind way funny though All right. so temperature units Fahrenheit and other things that your GUI version if you're into it logic controller version again something if you're really into technology you'd understand what those mean um, but that's mostly that's everything here in a uh, nutshell it's already gone up what three degrees so it's pretty good all right looks like I'm hitting about 27 minutes on this video so I'm gonna stop this video and I'm gonna start a third one um, everything in here is covered so everything else is gonna be either the dashboard or just going through the coach and showing you how things work uh, throughout see you in the next video